At the request of a viewer, I am making this video on how to operate your Edison Diamond Disc Phonograph. These are remarkable machines, and likely if yours has been stored in a proper location, such as a bedroom or a hallway all of these years, more than likely yours is going to work without much needed care. If yours was stored in a basement or a garage or a, a shed or a storage bin, something like that, you may have a little bit of trouble getting yours to operate. But stored in a proper place, it's going to provide years of fun and excitement for your family for years to come. And this one I picked up at an antique mall for a very light amount of money, right around $135, $140, which was an absolute steal. I would say the value of this particular unit, because of its condition, is probably around $400. I may be wrong, but you know it's all about what uh, what uh, what consumers are willing to pay for such a device. On mine, the turntable mat has been removed, and I put my own turntable mat on with uh, products that I found at Hobby Lobby. And it's basically a piece of felt cut to a big circle, and I used uh, some kind of a uh, a glue stick to apply it to the turntable. So, but beyond all that, uh, maybe you're just looking for some basics. How do I operate this thing? What kind of records can I play on it? How many times do I crank the crank there on the side? Uh, how do I turn it off and on? How do I adjust the volume? All that kind of good stuff. What kind of records do you play on this unit? Well, they're very easy to recognize because they're really thick. On the front of mine, I have a cabinet, and the cabinet stores records. So yours may not look exactly like mine, but if you're lucky enough, the unit came with records already in it. Mine did. Mine came with about 10. And this is what the records look like. They're extremely thick, and every single one of them will say Edison on them. You will not find one with Columbia or RCA Victor or any other kind of label on it. And this is the rule of thumb. If it doesn't say Edison on the front of it, don't play it on this phonograph. Don't play 45s, LPs, anything else that you find on it because it will destroy them and it may in fact ruin the machine. So this is what you'll look for. Thickness of record, Edison on the label. Now this label is a paper label. Sometimes the paper labels fall off and you may find one without a label on it. It's very common. Another uh, record that you may find looks like this. So you'll see the three little indentations there on the, on the label, but the label is actually indented on there or uh, somehow stamped onto the disc itself. And by turning it you know, a certain way in the light, you can read what's on the disc. Almost looks holographic or something. And of course, there is a picture of Thomas Edison there on the left side. So again, only use records that have Edison's name on the label. Don't use a record like this. This is a Victor label record, much thinner, and is designed to work on a Victrola or a Graffinola or the many other brands and models of 78 RPM record players out there. So now that we've gone over what to play on it, let's figure out how to play it. So let's go ahead and move in up on the unit a bit here, and we'll see what's going on underneath the turntable. What I would recommend before you even operate the unit is put some oil on it. And there's some people out there that might yell at me for the kind of oil I'm about to use, but it's worked fine for me and has resulted in many hours of playback on this unit trouble free. What you'll wanna do is put both hands underneath the turntable like this, and you just wanna lift up on it if the unit has been cranked some, which as you can see mine has, you'll see the mechanism start to turn underneath. But there's a couple of places on there that we need to drop some oil in. So if I can orient my camera here just to the right spot, I'll show you where those places are. The oil that I use is three-in-one oil, multi-purpose oil like this, should be available at most hardware stores. And there's three places to drop that oil. 
So let me show you the first place. The first place is here. And we're just going to cut, drop a couple drops in there. One, two, three. It shows on the front here. There it says oil. There it says oil. And then over here it says oil as well. The oil drop is actually over on this side. Can't really see it at the angle that I'm doing. But I'm going to drop a couple drops in there as well. And then I'm going to drop a couple of drops right underneath the spindle down here. Okay. There are little tubes that are attached to those oil drops and it is supposed to carry the oil down to the locations where the oil is supposed to go. So hopefully those particular tubes in your case have not been clogged by dust and dirt over the years. If they are, then the oil is not going to get where it's supposed to go anyway. So there we go. We've put some oil on the unit. Now let's go ahead and replace the turntable back to where it was. All right. And then let's just go over some basics of the operation of this unit. This is the reproducer here. And if your reproducer doesn't work or the needle on the bottom of it is gone or useless, broken, etc., you can find these on eBay. I don't know how common they are, but I have seen them there. There's a silver one that was a, uh, an updated version that plays um, electrical recordings or um, enhanced recordings. And uh, if you find one of those, those are great, but they're also more expensive. The gold ones are the standard one. This is actually removable, and all you do is you turn this right here and pull it out, and it removes from the tone arm itself. And your tone arm moves from left to right like that. The other controls that you have here on the front are a lever here and a brake. Your brake stops and starts your record like that. This here allows you to move the tone arm. I'm going to change my angle here so you can see this. So if you push this lever up, it moves your tone arm across the record to the left. You can also use it to drop the tone arm onto the record. So if I lift it, the tone arm drops. If I push it, the tone arm lifts up or the reproducer lifts up. All right. To check the needle, the best thing to do is to just put your finger underneath here and rub forward. And you should see, or you should see, you should hear that little rubbing noise. You can feel with your finger whether or not that needle has a sharp tip on it. It won't cut you, but you should be able to feel that there's a sharp tip there. If it feels round or if it feels dull, it's probably useless and you'll probably want to replace it before attempting to, to play records on it. On the side here is your crank. And when you crank it up, it's going to really depend on your unit. I really can't tell you that there's a set number of cranks to crank it with. But uh, you'll feel it as you're cranking it. You'll feel the tension starting to come in. I would do it slowly because these machines are old. So don't grab a hold of it and go crazy and start cranking wildly. Just slowly crank it like this. Hear that little ticking sound in the background? I believe on this unit about, it'll take about 16 to 20 cranks. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we'll go with that. So about 20 perhaps should be a good, good enough to play a full record. If not, increase it by a couple and try again. Now again, this crank is removable, so if you don't want the kids to be playing with this unit when you're not around, you can go ahead and pull this back, and this crank will unscrew and remove, and you can hide it. 
so that nobody can play your turntable when you're not there to supervise. And again, to put it back on, you press it in and turn it until you feel it kind of stop. All right, so that part is ready to go. Over on the front left of the unit is what is called the volume control. And this is the craziest thing on the face of the earth, but it's really brilliant. Your volume control goes from left to right and slides across this bar. When you slide it across to the left, it makes the sound louder. When you slide it to the right, it makes the sound softer. I usually leave mine wide open, but wait till you see what that actually does on the inside. I'm going to remove my camera from the tripod so I can show you here. On the front of the unit, you have this cover, and the cover is removable by grabbing it by the center here, lifting up, and pulling it towards you just a little, and then dropping it down. And on the inside here, you'll see this is the horn that actually does the playback. Uh, I mean, it's, it's the sound. It's where the sound is coming from and there's a cable that is attached to it. At the end of the cable is this little muffling ball, essentially, and when you move it to the right on top, it pushes the ball up into the middle of the, um, of the horn, and thereby softening or muffling the audio. And then when you open it wide up, it pulls this ball out. Is that the craziest thing you've ever seen in your life? That is really wild. Many of the other Victrolas that are top loaders have louvers on the front, and the louvers are your volume control. So when you pull the louver open, you get lots of sound. When you close the louvers, it muffles the sound. That's, this is my Columbia Graffinola over here, which I also have on my channel. Over here is where the reproducer was originally shipped with a unit. They packed it onto this little cradle here, and you pulled it off and put it into your Victrola that way. So it's really a fascinating piece of equipment. It's uh, amazing that a lot of these units still work. And uh, again, I think you'll be fascinated with the results that you get from it. And again, down here, we have... Um, a, a st vertical storage for the records and the guy that I bought this from actually included an original copy of an owner's manual. I don't want to say original copy it was just a copy of the owner's manual so and I just dropped it in the floor. In any case um, they're available out there somewhere you can probably download it. Now to find out what model you have of a uh, record player there is this plate on the inside here. All right, do you see uh, see that right there? So the plate on the inside of mine says that it's a uh, an 810, wait a minute, 819SM116872, I guess it's the serial number. But, uh, it eludes me that the, I think it's an S19. That's what it is. All right. So mine is an S19. That is the, the name of this particular or the model of this particular unit. Now, on some of your fancier units, you actually have a speed control back here in the back, usually located in this corner. And the speed control is kind of nice if you just want to tweak your record or play it really slow or really fast. But mine was a basic model and doesn't have that. Some of the units also have an auto shutoff control. So when the, uh, when the tone arm reaches the end of the record, it actually shuts off. That may be what this part right here is for on mine, but that part never reaches that other part right there. So that may be a, a defect of this particular unit. So now that you've seen the basic controls and all the other good stuff, where the sound comes from, I'm going to put my camera back on the tripod here. Now let's see how to actually play a record. All right, there's the focus cooperating. So what you'll do is you'll take one of your discs, place it on the center of the turntable like this, and then what you'll do is it really takes two hands to do it. You'll want to guide the tone arm with one hand 
and get it to this to this front of the record here and you'll see there's a dark spot right there in the record there's nothing there in that spot the recorded material is actually between here and here where, where you're seeing my fingers at so the grooves the sound starts here at the end of this dark spot goes across where the lighter spot is and then stops again at the dark spot there in the center some of the records that you'll find may have some damage to them for instance on this one you'll see there's a little chip out of the side it's okay to play that record as long as the part where the light part starts isn't where the chip is you can still play the record so the sound is in here that chip is not going to affect the playback of this record so let's go ahead and start her up and what you'll do we've already cranked it so go ahead and turn your little lever here on the front turn your brake off and you'll see the unit start to turn now notice how quiet this thing is just listen do you hear how quiet that is your turntable should be just that quiet I mean whisper quiet again another absolutely amazing engineering marvel of these machines just whisper quiet motor which doesn't take away from the sound playback at all now once you've centered your tone arm at the beginning of the recorded material you're gonna lift this lever down here let me move the camera so you can see it lift lift two fingers finger up here to guide the needle to guide the tone arm and then lift this lever down here until you start to hear the noise and then the rest is automatic from here And that's essentially it, folks. I appreciate you watching this video on how to operate your Edison Diamond Disc Phonograph. And I hope uh, yours works well and you don't have any problems with it. If it does have some problems, there's some forums online that I can link you to. Uh, but again, um, more than likely, yours is going to be working just fine. And just a little lubrication will get it on its way. Thank you for watching this video and please share this video with a friend who perhaps might be interested in antique record players. They're fun to collect and uh, it's like a treasure adventure going to antique malls and other places looking for these gigantic pancake records that you play on these units. Also, uh, please subscribe to my channel. It helps me out and uh, you can leave a comment below if you have a specific question about your record player. If I don't know the answer, I'll look it up and give you the answer. Thank you for watching, and have a wonderful music-filled day on your Edison.